Right now, what I'm going to talk about is uh, this. Um, when we were reading the Golden Roll reviews, some of the reviews from Golden Roll reviews. Again, Facebook page for movie reviews. You should check it out. But uh, he he um, he he did something that even I'm not sure. Like I I'm I'm not sure. Like he didn't realize what he's doing. Like and that was that he had low expectations for a movie. Like he says, you he, he said right here, not gonna lie, my expectations were low. And he says, but for, but for this, but surprisingly, not that bad. And that's what I want to talk about right now is expectations. Like you know, having them high or low. Now, to be honest, whenever I've had my expectations held high, usually they were never met. So like, uh, just give me an example. You know, um, Transformers Three, for example, like. The trailer like gave me this impression of what the movie was gonna be like, you know. And so when I actually saw the movie, you know, I'm not saying it was a terrible movie, but my impressions did not live up to the actual movie it's itself. Also, like, with or I should actually actually say that the movie did not live up to my expectations. It's also like with the Star Wars prequels, especially for the Phantom Menace. If you remember that, uh, everyone was like so excited to see that movie. They even camped outside the theater just to see the movie. And they were very disappointed. See, I mean, like, again, just want to bring this up. Uh, the um, reviewer from Golden Row Reviews did mention in one of his reviews about having low expectations. And I think that, but, and this is like, I wanted to actually talk about this for a while, so now I'm bringing it up. And I think it's really good to have low expectations. Why? Because then your expectations, most of the time, will be met. If you have high, high expectations for something, then, you know, you're going to, be it disappointed. Be yeah, you're gonna be disappointed. I mean, again, I mentioned I mentioned Transformers three. What was your example again? Uh, the Star Wars prequels, like with the fan mess. Yeah, um, and then for me, actually, to be honest with the Star Wars prequels, my example could be Revenge of the Sith. And again, this was this was kind of my fault because the trailer kind of like oh yeah, the, right. the trailer like really actually like did it for me. It trailer really like bought me off. Like oh my god, it's gonna be an epic movie. But then it was like. Okay, no, it's not exactly what I Friends thought it was going to be. Friends of the Sith was not in attack, but all the Star Wars prequels, basically, were just like, oh man, this movie's going to be epic. And then these in the theater. But really this for me... This is boring. I know, but like for me, it was Revenge of the Sith that really, like, my expectations were really high, you know, compared to the other movies. And you were disappointed. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying it was a bad movie, it was still a good movie. I mean, but it's like, the best of the prequels. Aren't well, yeah, exactly, but I like... I didn't think it was that great, though, but... Eh. No, it was still a good movie. It's just that my expectations were not met. You know, like again, I set these high expectations that were not met, and like um, I think the only time I have, if I if I have set high expectations for something, and like, and the only time they were ever met, and this is saying if I did set high expectations for something, I can't I can't remember if I did this or not, but it was for Lord of the Rings: The Return of the King. That was probably the only time that my expectations were, were ever met. And I'll give you another example, um, Halo 2 to Halo 3, like, at Halo 2, it ends, like, at the climax, like, like, there's no, there's no, like, resolution in Halo, in the Halo 2 storyline, there's only the, right, there's the, the starting point, the rising action, and then the climax, oh. it just stops at a climax. Oh, here's another example of high expectations that weren't met, uh, Spider-Man 3, and X-Men 3, and X-Men Origins, Wolverine, like, you were so excited. I was so excited to see those movies, and I was disappointed. Right, and like, okay, just going back to Halo, yeah, exactly, and I agree with you there, but like, like it was like Halo, th Halo with Spider-Man 3, oh my god, like, I mean, and sometimes with that movie, I felt uncomfortable just watching it, like, I mean, I don't really blame it, or like, um, after. it's mostly the studio, like how they did Venom, <laughs> No, not that. Like, like the part where Peter Parker turns all emo. Oh and like, yeah, he does a stupid dance. Yeah, he does. He does. He does a dance like in the middle of the street. And when I'm watching that, I'm like, what am I watching here? This isn't. This is not Spider Man. What? What is this? What is this? You know, this is ridiculous. Yeah, or especially when he does the dancing just to uh, impress Mary Jane. Oh God! You know, don't even, don't even. Don't even mention that, hits, please. Sir. Don't even mention that, please. Don't even mention that because. When I saw Spider-Man 3, and when I was watching that part, and I was just looking at that, and I'm like, what is this? Why am I watching this, you know? I, I'm, I'm actually, like, I feel like, I don't even, I'm feeling like, this isn't Spider-Man. This is not what I, it's this like, is not what I came to see. It's it's Chicago, just a wannabe version of Chicago. 
Chicago. I mean, but going back to, Sp- to Star Wars Episode Three, I mean, like, because like you know, you had really high expectations for Spider Man Three and X Men Three, and I had high but, expectations but, but, for Wolverine also. Yeah. But but like I, my expectations were in Star were, were in Star Wars Episode Three, and they were not met. Again, Halo Three. I actually thought the storyline was going to be epic because Halo Two gave me this impression and it had the, it left me these left me with these high expectations. Because of high, of the trick they did of leaving of leaving the storyline right at the climax instead of just the falling resolution, so that gave me the expectations for Halo Three, and my expectations were not really met. You know, I felt like the storyline Halo Three was kind of rushed. So, whenever and okay, the only whenever I have had low expectations, though, you know, the um I've had better outcomes. So let me give you some examples. Last in winter term, we had something called rep term. Which is when a theater production, or like the theater company of a college, develops its entire time to making theater productions. Now I saw two plays: The Green Bird and The Caucasian Chalk Circle. Now personally, I kind of liked Green Bird a little bit better, but that was because when I saw it, it was more comedic, and I was kind of in the mood for more of a comedy kind of situation. So I kind of enjoyed it a little bit better. And I was interested in more of the Caucasian Chalk Circle. I enjoyed that too, but. When I went, when the next time, the next day, the next day we had class. You know, we discussed. You know, those two plays, and some of the people, including my professor, were saying how they had high expectations for the Green Bird, and those expectations were not met. But see, that was the thing, though. You know, is like they had high expectations for it, and because they were not met, they were a little disappointed. But for me, I had no expectations for the Green Bird, actually. The only thing I knew about the Green Bird was that it was a comedy, and I was and I was like, "Hey, well, I like comedies, you know. Let's see this." And I really enjoyed the Green Bird because of that. So ever since then, I came to a realization. I was like, "Hey, wait a minute. I enjoyed this because you know, because of, because it's a comedy. Because not because it's comedy. Because I had low expectations. Because I didn't expect much out of it. I just like, oh, it's a comedy. I'm going to get a few laughs out of it. I really enjoyed it because of that. And in fact, I saw I saw the Green Bird twice because of that." Um, other, um, examples of not having expectations, um... I have some, uh, the movie Ted from last summer, I mean, I... You didn't have any expectations for that? I really, no, I mean, I, uh, me and my family went to see that movie together, and surprisingly, I laughed, it was a funny movie, but originally, I didn't really want to see it, it didn't look that interesting, but I really did like it, and, oh yeah, uh... Do you, do you know about the show called The Evil Dead, by any chance? The Evil Dead. Well, I've heard the movie series. If it's from the '80s, and the guy who did those movies is Sam Raimi. He also did the Spider-Man trilogy and the latest Oz movie, which is now out in theaters, starring James Franco. No, I have not heard about the Evil Dead remake. But please, we need to stop remaking these horror movies. Uh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, seriously, I don't understand. I mean, they had to remake Psycho. Between Vince Vaughn as Norman Bates, really? Uh-uh. I haven't seen Psycho, but like, uh, I don't think you have to remake the movie. It's a classic. Yeah, you know? the, it's a classic. Hitchcock is a classic director, and that movie deserves no remake. And then you have to remake Halloween, which was like a porn movie. I saw the the Rob Zombie one. I saw that. It was terrible. Terrible. It was not scary. Giving Mike, Michael Myers a backstory? No. We don't need a backstory of how he became so evil. We like his backstory being mysterious. Yeah. Do you have anything else to say about it? I mean, it was just like a porn movie. It has a typical horror cliche, which is I'm really tired of it. Oh, teenagers, they do dumb things. They smoke marijuana. They drink alcohol. They party. Then a couple goes into some room, and then they have sex, and then a monster sees them and kills them. <laughs> That's basically about it. It's just done to death. Oh my god. You know, actually, um, one of the movies, um, I had, lo- had almost, like, no expect- no expectations for it, was Skyfall. 007 Skyfall. Oh, no, I, I was expecting that to be good, and I was very pleased. That movie was awesome. But like, okay, but I'm I'm just saying in my in my example, dude. Like, yeah. I had no expectations for that movie because I was just like, okay, it's it's 007. I've seen 007 movies before and they're pretty good. So let's see this movie. And then um, 
I saw this, I saw 007 Skyfall, and I was like, wow, that was an amazing performance, and that was an awesome movie, you know? And having Javier Bardem as the antagonist he was, was just evil. amazing. He was evil. He and was nasty. You have, have, you seen, have you seen No Country for Old Men? <laughs> you know, I still haven't seen that You movie. have to see that movie, dude. And uh, Javier Bardem is amazing in that movie. Well, it stars two of my favorite actors, uh, Tommy Lee Jones, who you might know as Agent K from the Men in Black movies, and as Gerard from The Fugitive. Right. He won an Oscar for it, and he starred in Lincoln last year's Lincoln. And Josh Brolin. Well, you you once you once you see No Country for Old Men, you should put Hob, you're gonna put Javier Bardem on your list. I mean, then. I mean, because like that's another example of a movie where I had no expectations or very little expectations. All I remember seeing was like about like thirty seconds in the movie because um, I was I saw it on a TV screen one time and that was it. I mean, I've seen some of the Coen Brothers movies like uh, Big Lebowski, which is hilarious. Uh, True Grit, which was very good. Burn After Reading, that was very good. Fargo, I didn't really like Fargo. I found that kind of boring. I know a lot of people like that, but it's not it's not one of my favorite movies. I think it's their weakest. But again, the point is like. What I've noticed is that when you have high expectations for something, most of the time... It's a disappointment. It's a disappointment. But when you have low expectations, you know, most of the time, you you feel better about a product or a content, whether that's a play, a movie, or a video game. Or a CD, a music CD. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. A music CD, you know? I mean, like, that's why I've just... I, I don't know why I didn't come to this conclusion earlier, you know, before seeing Green the Greenbird uh, play, but now that I've seen that and I just came to this conclusion like, hey, you know, if I have low expectations for something, chances are I'm going to like it better than if I always had high expectations for something because the majority of the times I already had, I always had high expectations for something. It's not like, it's not that I didn't, you know, it's not that I didn't like the movie. It's just that I had higher expectations for what the movie than what the movie delivered, you know, and so I wasn't completely satisfied with it, you know, I didn't, I, there was still a part of me that felt empty inside when I watched it out of the theater, you know, uh, so I feel as though, you know, again, mo- we, sh- we should try to, you know, try and have low expectations for something, because then I feel as though we were going to, you know, basically, and basically my point is that we're going to enjoy things better more, or try to at least, Yeah. and, you know, again, just pointing it out, you know, my theater class, a lot of them were saying, those who were saying they liked the Caucasian chalk circle better, they were saying how they had high expectations for the Green Bird, and you know, um, their, their their expectations were not met. So yeah, I mean, I, again, I think we should try reaching for lower expectations because then we'll probably more, be more satisfied most of the time. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Oh yeah, and speaking of uh, you know all these movies, I like to uh, t- uh, tell people to check this movie out. Uh, if you guys like the Matrix trilogy. Check out this movie called Dark City. It came out a year before the first Matrix movie and, well, bombed at the box office. And But there are a lot of similarities, you know, in tone and, you know, like atmosphere and all that and plot points. It's The guy did Dark City also did iRobot and The Crow. Check it out. <laughs> I decided to bring that up because most people don't know about Dark City. It's a sci-fi masterpiece. All right, well, folks, we're going to be right back after these musical breaks with the song Ich Will by Rammstein. Yes, Rammstein. Which is an awesome song, so listen up. Ich will. I didn't say that right. <laughs> <laughs> 